So today I'm going to show you how to create an Ubuntu server virtual machine on VirtualBox version 7.0.2. So we're actually going to be using the latest version of the operating system, which is version 22.04 LTS. Ubuntu server is a server operating system developed by Canonical and open source programmers around the world. It works with nearly any hardware or virtualization platform, and it can actually be used to serve up websites, file shares, containers, as well as expand your company offerings with a great cloud presence. Some of the new features of Ubuntu Server include improved cloud images with compliance, extended security, and more. Open SSL version 3 for modern general purpose security and secure communications. Network acceleration improvements with Smart NIC and support in NetPlan. So if you'd like to try out all of these new features in, in Ubuntu Server, then I'm just going to quickly show you how we can deploy a virtual machine running this operating system. So what I actually need you to do is to download the actual ISO image for the operating system. So just uh, open up a browser window and run a Google search of Linux Ubuntu. On the return search results, click on the ubuntu.com search result. And then this should actually open up the default homepage for the Ubuntu website. So the next thing you now need to do is you need to click on the download uh, link and then click on where it says get Ubuntu server and then click on where it says uh, download Ubuntu server. So you should now see an ISO image file being downloaded by your browser. Please note that this download file is just about uh, 1.5 gigs in size and you'll need a data plan that will actually allow you to download a file of this size. So next we're actually going to open up VirtualBox and create the Linux Ubuntu virtual machine. So click on new and then on the name field you need to type in a name for the virtual machine. So I'm just going to set that name to Linux Ubuntu server and then on the ISO image uh, option select other and then browse to the location of where you've actually downloaded the ISO image file. Click on open and you should now see the ISO image file being shown on the ISO image field. Click on next and then you then need to set a username. So I'm just actually going to set it to my name or you can actually set it to whatever you'd like. And then on the password field, I'm just going to type in my uh, custom password. So I'm just going to repeat that password on the repeat password field. And then on the domain name field, I'm just going to set up my custom domain name. So I'm just going to type in uh, my uh, uh, domain name, so which is actually Ubuntu server dot uh, my domain name dot com. And then I'm just going to make a correction on the host name. So I'm just going to set that to Linux Ubuntu server and then click on next. So you need to set your base memory. So I'm just going to set that to four gigs of RAM. RAM and then I'm actually going to increase the uh, number of processors to two and then click on next. So you then need to configure the virtual hard disk. So I'm just going to create a 50 gig uh, virtual hard disk and then click on next to proceed to the next step. So you should actually see a summary page showing you all of the selections that you've actually made. So click on finish to complete the virtual machine creation process. And then in step three, we're then going to start the virtual machine and then install the Linux Ubuntu server operating system. So uh, before we actually start the VM, click on settings and then click on the display tab. So we're going to increase the video memory to 128 megabytes of uh, memory. And then I'm just going to increase the scale factor to 200%. So select the virtual machine and then click on start. So you should actually see a command line uh, or a prompt, which is actually showing you what is actually happening to the virtual machine. So this should then allow you to complete the installation. So the first thing we need to do is to select a language. So select English and then choose continue without updating. So I'm just going to press on done, press on done once again, and then we're then going to configure a guided storage uh, layout. So I'm just going to proceed with the default selections and then click on done. Select continue, and then here you then need to type in your name. So I'm just going to set that to administrator, and then the server's name, I'm also then going to just set that to uh, Ubuntu server. I'm just going to set it to Linux Ubuntu server actually. I actually thought that it was going to get this from the installer actually the previous uh, selections that we made but I'm just going to repeat that anyway so I'm just going to type in a username which is administrator 
and then I'm also then going to type in a custom password and then uh, press on done. So I'm going to select the install open SSH server option and then uh, select done. Press continue and here you can actually choose a custom application. So I'm just going to proceed without any of those actually. And you should actually see an installation progress log showing you everything that the installer is actually doing. So this should take about five minutes or so to complete. So you just have to wait for this process to complete. So once it's done, you need to reboot the uh, virtual machine so that it can actually boot up using the operating system that we've just installed. So um, the virtual machine is actually booting up now and this this boot process should take about a minute or so it just depends on the performance of your host computer as well as the virtual machine actually so um once the boot process is complete i'm just going to log into the virtual machine so i'm just going to type in the username that i configured earlier as well as the password that i also configured earlier okay so i've successfully logged into the virtual machine so I'm just going to run the command sudo su and uh, as you can see I've also been able to log into the root user account on the server. So the next thing that I'm actually going to show you is how you can actually install the VirtualBox guest edition software that allows you to create things like shared uh, folders between your host computer and the virtual machine. So I've actually I had actually logged out of the virtual machine earlier. So let me just uh, re-log into the virtual machine again and uh, i'm just going to change to the root user account and then to actually install the guest edition software what you need to do is you need to click on uh, devices and then click on the insert uh, guest editions uh, cd image so once you've actually done that the next thing you need to do is you need to mount the cd image so run the command sudo mount and then i'm then going to type in the location of the cd drive which is dev st rom and then we're going to mount it to the media CD-ROM directory. But I think I don't have that CD-ROM directory created. So I'm just going to move into the media directory. And as you can see, I don't have that CD-ROM directory uh, created. So I'm just going to create the CD-ROM uh, directory. And then let me just retry to mount that uh, guest edition's uh, CD image. And as you can see, I've successfully mounted that uh, CD file. Sorry, the CD uh, disk image actually. And uh, if I move to that directory, you can actually see the files now. So um, the next thing you need to do is you need to install some dependencies that are needed for this uh, installation. So I'm just going to type in uh, apt install. So I'm actually going to be installing uh, build essential and a few other dependencies that are actually needed by the uh, guest editions uh, software. So this should take about a minute or so depending on the performance of your internet connection. And then the next thing you then need to run is uh, you need to type in, uh, yeah, you first need to move into the uh, CD-ROM directory and then just type in uh, dot and then type in a forward slash and then type in uh, vbox uh, linux editions dot uh, pkg um, so if you run that command this is what actually installs the guest edition software so once the installation is complete you then need to restart the virtual machine so that's been it guys that's a quick take at how you can quickly install ubuntu on virtualbox i hope the tutorial has been informative and i'd like to thank you for viewing